now uh, this is second of a kind where we are doing fractions to decimals again but this time you can see that the numbers are different suppose here we don't have tens hundreds or thousands instead we have 48 20 32 40 so different numbers are there instead of tens hundreds or thousands so how we are going to do this in a fraction when we write suppose say 3 by 5 3 is my numerator and 5 is my denominator and this line which separates these two numbers is actually the division it's used for dividing that means 3 is getting divided by 5 in other way we can say so similarly 1 by 4 means 1 is getting divided by not 4 sorry 40 so 1 is getting divided by 40 so how we do this 1 we get this division line and we write 40 here so when we are trying to divide 1 by 40 as you can see 1 is less than 40 so we cannot uh, divide it we need a greater number than 40 to divide it in order to do that we are going to put a decimal point here this is the quotient line where we write the answer of the division we are going to put a decimal point here and we will put a zero here it becomes 10 with the help of the decimal point we are going to bring as many zeros as we want in order to increase the number but still you can see that uh, 40 is still it is greater than 10 we cannot divide 10 so what we do in this case you cannot add another decimal you cannot add two three decimals in a number only one decimal is allowed in a number so in that case when you cannot divide it normally we are going to put another zero here to bring this zero so point brings a zero at first and then a zero brings a zero here so it's now 100 so we can easily divide this so 40 times 2 is 80 40 times 3 is 120 so obviously we are going to take this one so if we put 2 we are going to get 80 here when we subtract 80 we get 20 again you see it's 20 is the remainder and uh, in case of 20 because of the decimal already placed uh, before it initially helps us to add a zero here it's 200 so as you can see 40 times 5 if i do is 200 so we do 5 here and 200 so we get our answer that is 0 0.025 let me explain you another with another example that is 1 by 8 how we are going to do it the more and more you practice on the sums uh, you're going to be uh, learning it more well at the first time it may be quite difficult it may be quite uh, hard to understand that how these uh, divisions are working on but you need to know so 1 by 8 means 1 divided by 8 right so let's start with that so 1 is in the middle we give the division line this is my quotient or my answer line and this portion and this is my divisor that divides it so 8 is my divisor and 1 is my dividend and the quotient is the answer place so 1 cannot be divided by 8 because 1 is lesser than 8 so we have to put a decimal and bring the 0 here as we learned at the initial at the very beginning of the process of division so you can see now here we don't need to put a zero and uh, put another uh, zero here to make it 100 because 10 is already greater than 8. So we can easily divide. So 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So we are going to take 1 here and we are going to write 8 here. 8 times 1 is 8 and we subtract it from 10 and we get 2 here. So 2 is the remainder. So do I need to put a 0 after 1? No, because of the decimal already we are going to get a 0. Because of the decimal in each step of the division you get 0 in every place. So we get 20 here. So 8 times 2 is giving you 16. We can't do 8 times 3 because it is going to be, if you do 8 times 3 it's going to be 24 which is greater than 20 we cannot take it so we are going to do 8 times 2 that is 16 so 
again we uh, subtract it we get 4 again in the third step you don't need to add 0 or anything because of the decimal you put it to the front you are going to put a 0 here you get 40 so again 8 times 5 is 40 so if you would take 40 you subtract it and you get 0.125 that is going to be your answer let's try with the third example to be more and more clear of different varieties of sum so far I hope it's getting a little bit clear so this time again I will write 9 divided by 20 right so that means what 9 sits in the middle it is my dividend 20 is the divisor and this is my quotient place means my answers place so as you can see 9 is less than 20 so for this case I am going to put a decimal first first I am putting a decimal and I am going to add a 0 beside 9 so with the placing of the decimal your 9 becomes 90 and it is also greater than 20 so this time I think it's now clear that we don't need to add a 0 to make it 900 so 20 times 3 is 60, 20 times 4 is 80 and 20 times 5 is 100. So obviously we are not going to take 5, we are going to take 20 times 4 that is 80. So let's take 4 in the answers place, 20 times 4, we just write the product in the subtraction place where we do the subtraction. So 90 minus 80 is 10. So, because of the decimal, as we know, a 0 will automatically come. We don't need to put a 0 after 4. We don't do this. We don't put a 0 here. No, we don't do this. So, so because of the decimal, a 0 comes beside 10. So, it is 100 now. So, 20 times how much is uh, 100? 20 times 5 is 100. As you can see, I will write 5 here beside 4 and I subtract 100 from 100. I get 0.45 is my answer. Similarly, let's try this. 3 divided by 32. So, I will again write 3 in the dividends place and divisor is 32. So, I will, what will I do? In the answers place, I will write a decimal to increase the number 3 to make it 30. But here now, just like the first example, you can see that 30 is still less than 32. We cannot divide it. This number must be, it must be greater than the number to the left. It must be greater than the number to the left, but it is not greater. So, since it is not greater, we are going to place a 0 here after the decimal. For the decimal, we got one zero. We are going to put a 0 and get a 0 here. That now it is what? 300. 300 is obviously greater than 32. So let's try now. Now 32 times how much you should do? 32 times 8 if you do. Since 3 times 8 is 24. See it is 30 here. If you see the first two digits it is 30. So 3 times is 24. So let's try 32 times 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 1. 8 times 3 is 24 and 1, 256. Let's try 32 times 9. That is 9 to the 18, 1, 3 times 9 is 27 and 1 is 28. So we can take this one. But we cannot take 32 times 10 as it is not going to be possible because 320. So we are going to take 9. Let's take this one. 288 when we subtract it we get 12 we get here 12 so now do we need to add any 0 after 9 we don't need to add any 0 after 9 why because because of the decimal in the first step we get a 0 automatically here now let's try to get a number closest to 120 or maybe it's going to be 120 so if we try with uh, say 4, 2 for the 8 and 3 for the 12. It's 120. It's going to be greater. We cannot take it with 4. So let's try with 3 now. So 2 3 is a 6 and 3 3 is a 
9. So we can definitely take it. So I'm going to put the 3 here. And what's the product of 32 times 3? That is 96. So I'm going to write 96 here. And I will subtract them. So the answer will be 24. Again, as you can see, the remainder is getting left. So because of the decimal, a 0 will automatically come. Here I don't need to put any 0 after 3 in the quotient's place. So it's 240. So 32 times if I do say 7 or suppose I do 8, 8 is going to be greater. So we can't take that. If, we, if I do 32 times 7, it's going to be 224. That means we can take this. So after 3 comes 7. So it's going to be 1, 6. So we can take this one. That is 32 times 7. We can take this. Since it is lesser than 240. So we can take this. Now again as you can see it's quite a long sum. Because it's going on and on and on. So now it's now it's coming as 160. So what can we take that takes us 160 or closest to 160? If we try with 5, you can see 5 times 2 is 10 and 1 is 6. So as you can see, it's a match. So we can take 5 after 7. So it's minus 160. So as you can see, there is no remainder. So the answer will be 0 0.09375. Okay, next comes another example, the final example of this type of conversion. So, the earlier conversion had in its denominators only tens, hundreds, thousands. That is one, one uh, type of sum that you get from in conversions of fractions to decimals. But here, this one, here you are going to get different kinds of numbers where you have to do it. So, let's start with this one that is 7 divided by 40 that is equal that is 7 will be in the dividends place, 40 will be in the divisor place. So as you can see 7 is less, so I will put a decimal, I bring a 0 and so it becomes 70. So in this case I am going to add a number which is closest to 70. So 40 times 2 if you do it's going to be 80 which is much greater than 70, we cannot take it. So we are going to do 1, simply 1. That means 40 times 1 is 40, we write 40 here give the subtraction sign, subtract it, write 30. Because of the decimal, automatically a 0 will come down. So this time, we are going to find the number, which is either 300, uh, gives us 300 or closest to it. So 40 times 7, if we do, it's 280. And if we do 40 times 8, it's going to be 320, which is much greater. We cannot take this. We are going to take this. So we take 7 here. So we write here 280. So it's going to be 20. Now again with the help of the decimal. As you can see the decimal is there. So let me raise this. Yes. So because of the decimal a 0 will automatically come. We don't need to do anything in this case. So 40 times 5, if we do, it's going to be 200. So I'm going to write 5 here. And we are going to put the product of 40 times 5 and subtract it from the final number. So it comes as, so the answer of this sum that is going to come, that is, let me write it for you, that is, it's going to be 0.175. That is the answer of the calculation out, out here. Yes. So these are the types, as you can see, that happens uh, and that comes uh, in case of, and there are a lot many varieties of fractions to decimal conversions, um, uh, which uh, I will explain further. But this is so far how it is done when you get uh, uh, fractions of this kind and uh, they are uh, asked, you are asked to convert them. So this is one of the possible ways. The more you practice, the more you're going to learn about it in detail.